Hi guys, Martin here coming to you with my build update number three for the Edward Limited Edition 148 Tempest Mark V. Here's the box for it. It's a kit that was uh, kindly given to me by Mr. Bob Dyer. So thanks Bob as always. Now, end of build update number two, I'd uh, painted both the resin cockpit, the injection molded cockpit, and I used the injection molded cockpit inside the model, because you can hardly see anything through the canopy space. And I decided to display the resin cockpit with all the PE details and use that as a standalone display next to the model. And uh, I'd got the model built up, primed, ready for pre-shading and painting, and that's what this update is about. It's all about the painting stage and decal stage. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'll start off with, we'll just have a quick look at that resin cockpit. I showed photographs of this in the last, we can get an idea of the size of it like this. That's going to be standing next to the aircraft, decided to have the port side panel glued in an open position so you can see inside. Um, since then I painted the spinner yellow. I used uh, model masters for that. 4611 yellow. I mixed just the tiniest drop of red, some Tamiya red with that XF7 just to take that bright lemony yellow away and make it look slightly darker yellow. Painted the spinner as well, and not the spinner, the propeller blades as well. the yellow tips and then the back plate obviously yellow to match the spinner painted the wheels these are the main wheels I sanded some flats on the bottom make them look like they're weighted and then the opposite side They're the two main wheels and then there's the rear wheel that's painted. Everything's been clear coated ready for weathering which will be the next stage weathering and final assembly. Here's the drop tanks, there's one and if you look around the top there's a PE bracket that goes all the way around. Again I'll do some photographs that you can see at the end of this. So the two drop tanks painted and uh, PE assembled weather, ready for weathering. And then the only other things are the um, injection moldy painting items of the oleo struts for the wheels and uh, wheel braces. And that's all four of those, two of each. I'll show you photographs at the end. Again, they're sealed, ready for weathering. I have a couple of PE parts that have got to go on at the end, final assembly. That'll be the antenna, uh, the pilot step, and the pitot tube. But they'll be done right at the end, final assembly. Now the aircraft. She's all painted up with the D-Day stripes, all day cows are on, so here she is. Have a look at her now. So I started off by uh, pre-shading, then on top of that I masked for the stripes. I painted the white first, airbrushed that on, top and bottom. Let that dry, then taped over the white to leave spaces for the black. And then airbrushed the black on. I just used XF1 black Tamiya and XF2 white Tamiya for that. 
and thin down about 60% thinner, do it thin. And I put a little bit of white in the black just to tone that down a little bit so it's not stark black. And after that I then uh, masked over these stripes with paper and masking tape and then I airbrushed the underside um, medium sea grey. I used XF83 for that. I toned it down with white for scale and then I put more white in the cup to tone it down even further to get these highlights that you see and airbrushed highlights on it. When that was done I masked over that and I did the upper grey, the dark sea grey Ocean Grey, sorry, XF82, RAF Ocean Grey. I added some white again to tone it down and then airbrushed that. Um, what I forgot to mention is I always make my masks, I take the um, painting instructions and I blow up, I scale the model, scale the instructions, create a scale factor and then I blow up those uh, painting instruction views on my um, printer, print them off and then cut out the masks. So first I would have cut out the dark green mask, put them on so it leaves the spaces for the grey, airbrush the grey in the spaces, then remove those masks and uh, do the opposite, e uh, mask over the grey that was previously painted and then the space in between were airbrushed with the, ocean, uh, the dark green RAF. So after doing the um, ocean grey for the upper side, I added more white to it to tone it down to do the highlights that you can see. And after masking over that, I used the XF81 RAF dark green. Again, toned down with some white and then toned down further for highlights. After that was done, I then painted the exhausts. I used a bit of copper and a bit of steel. Mixed. And, uh, and then I masked off for the yellow leading edge stripes. Painted those. I then masked off for the black uh, walkways. Again, toned down with some white. And then the last thing I did was paint the starboard side green light and the port side red light. And that was it. All the painting done. And then it was on with decals, so I gave it a clear coat. As always, I use my uh, Model Masters Gloss Clear Coat. Been using it since I started modeling, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, I'm not going to change because I like the way it, the finish it gives. Always airbrush around 25 psi when I put the varnishes on using a 0.3 needle. Um, so, I let that gloss coat dry and then I applied the decals. I had um, about 16 main decals and then there's a sheet of stencils. If you look closely there you might see some of the stencils. There was 56 stencils so believe it or not on this model there are 56 stencils. They might not be showing up little black lettering here and there. Top and bottom. All over. What I forgot to mention is I use the uh, wheel bay doors, rear and front as masks, temporarily located with putter to hold them in place so that then they get painted at the same time. And now before I start weathering, um, sorry when I weather I'll weather over those and then I'll remove them ready for final assembly. Well, that's it, that's how she's looking. I think she's looking pretty good, I'm up here. Um, just for show propeller, spinner, I can slide that over. The spindle is glued in position so the only way you can make your propeller spin is if you if you put that, just lay that over there with the spinner, here's the spinner obviously you glue the spinner to the back plate and that can just slide off. 
So how do we stop that doing it? So what I did was I got a bit of sprue. I drilled down the middle, diameter just slightly bigger than the spindle, and then cut it to length. So now I've got a little bush in here. And what I'll do is I'll just slide that over the spindle. There you go, and I'll glue that in place. And that'll trap the spinner on the spindle, but it'll still spin. And then I'll glue the spindle spinner in place and we'll have a spinning prop. There she is with the prop temporarily located so you can get a good idea what she's looking like. <laughs> Alright, enough of that. So that's it guys. Um, stick around, there will be some still shots of this for you to look at and uh, next update will be the weathering and final assembly and then after that we'll do the final reveal. So until then guys, thanks for following this build, thanks for watching this video and uh, hope you're all having fun with your own models and until the next build update, Talio chocks away. Thank mm -hmm. you.